everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl. And it's week three of the Pocket Art Challenge. I am really excited for today. I have my little goodies set aside. I was pretty excited about putting these particular images together. I really, really liked them. I really liked how they turned out. So I'm not sure where this is all gonna take me, but I'm excited to find out. So as you recall, in the last video, I showed you that I had tucked the prompts into this little pocket. I would normally have this in a binder, but I haven't I haven't quite showed you my binder yet. So I want to debut that because it's a favorite little binder now. It's it's so lovely, but I wanted to, to work on that in a separate video and show you what I have so far and how I'm going to embellish it. Uh, this is the little pile of pockets I have uh, done so far with last week's pockets, which are these right here, you may recall. Um, and so I will be doing the back of these and then a whole new page. I also showed you last week how I kind of prep um, my ingredients ahead of time. So these are the images I have to work with and then the pocket page that I plan on using for today. So I will be doing these pockets here and then these two pockets here. Um, I don't have a formula. I don't have a plan yet of how this is all going to lay out, how am I going to embellish them or anything. Um, but the prompt for this week is collection. So collection. Um, how you could interpret it is taking a photo of a favorite collection that you have or multiple collections you might have in your house, um, finding collections on the internet um, that you might want to kind of memory keep in your pocket art binder, um, or showcasing materials. So with this one, um, what I meant by that is like doing a pocket that's dedicated to some of your favorite washi or some of your favorite stickers, like making a little pattern out of stickers and then just kind of um, popping those into some pockets or the invisible pockets. Um, I know that one challenge of pockets is, especially with um, photographing them, is avoiding glare. I suspect, now I'm not a project life person, I can only, I'm only make. this is my suspicion, is that I think it's possible that some people might photograph their artwork on top of the pocket, like so. Therefore, you're avoiding the glare. You're still getting the pocket look. You can still see there's a pocket behind. Oftentimes, I, I feel like people who are photographing pocket pages sometimes have the pocket pages in a binder so it gives that look but I have studied many a pocket page <laughs> and I have tried to figure out what is what is happening in this photo that they are do not have a glare um, I managed to take a decent photo the first week but I had to really really tilt my camera in different ways to really try to avoid the glare so it if there's a secret out there, this is my suspicion. But for po the pocket art challenge, I'm gonna say this is a really good solution if that glare really bothers you and you just can't seem to take a, a photo without getting a glare. If you are a Project Live person though, and you have you have this, the key to this very secret knowledge, please share in the comments below. Speaking of comments below, I am I was really happy to read all the comments about the breakfast cereal question. <laughs> what is your favorite? What was the favorite breakfast cereal you ate for Saturday morning cartoons? I read every single comment. Thank you so much for leaving them. And I think for this week's question, I wanted to ask is I wanted to try something different that I don't normally do. I don't know that I actually I don't know that I've ever done it can't remember a time I did it, but I thought it would be interesting to try doing my video a little differently where I would just not talk and I'm just going to put my playlist, my favorite playlist of music on and just keep, keep it quiet, just craft to myself, go into my little introverted self and just craft and then you guys would just watch and listen to my fun playlist with me. You can just watch and, and listen to music. I'm not doing, I don't really feel like I'm doing anything amazing or anything. It's not like I'm groundbreaking crafting is happening here. <laughs> so it might be really nice and enjoyable just to listen to some nice music and just kind of watch. Personally, 
I, I'm kind of split. I like some videos where there's an explanation going on, especially when it's working with maybe like tools I'm unfamiliar with, or um, I've been watching a lot of sketching and watercolor videos lately. So yes, for those type of videos, I'm very interested in what you have to say, why you're choosing this. I don't know much about those tools, so I'm very intrigued. On the other hand, I also love videos where there is no talking, it's music, and you're just watching somebody sketch, craft, maybe just do studying, working around their house, cooking. Um, some of my favorite channels like Nami is one of them. It is a Japanese girl living alone and her channel is just so fun to watch. She never talks. She just has little captions that she kind of talks through it, but it's in, it's in writing. Am I saying that right? That sounds weird. But you know what I mean? Like she's not talking in the video. It's just music. It's just her leaving little captions. And so you totally get the gist. And I love her videos because they're so calming. I will leave a link below because I have probably been watching her for about a year. And she's one of my favorite channels. It's just a very nice, soothing kind of video to watch. I wouldn't describe my channel as soothing. <laughs> Although I'm not opposed to making it so. Um, so I just wanted to experiment and see how that goes. I know I've heard many times in the past that people like the talking. They like the um, understanding, you know, why are you making that decision? What is the process? And I love those kind of videos too. Those can often be very helpful. But I think it's, I think it's fun to try something new, right? So my question this week is tell me in the comments, what type of videos do you love? Do you love the talking through the process videos? Do you love watching someone just silently working and you get to hear music? Or do you like a mix of both? Let me know. But for this video, I'm gonna go ahead, turn my playlist on, you will be hearing it on your end. And we're just going to see what happens when I work in silence. Let's do this.
Okay, so that is that is my set of cards for today. I'm kind of like experimenting with the layout, what will look best. One of my cards is still drying. So I wanted to talk about my my collection here and what some of these things mean now that I have them done. So again, this week was mostly about having digital alt, digitally altered art and then embellishing it. Um, so there was time that I put into this ahead of time and then the embellishing. So this Memories Not Things um, is because the, the prompt this week is collection. And I, uh, when I went on this trip to Italy a few years ago, there was a little coin purse that I remember seeing in the stationery shop and it said, collect memories, not things, <laughs> which of course I bought it. <laughs> So that's ironic. Um, and I, I have tried to remember that ever since, which is why I purchased it. So it was like this little symbol, but I, I can't say it's been effective. And I don't know why people, like some people are just not things people. They just don't really feel the need to have a lot of things. They might just, um, they might actually be adverse to having things. And then there's some of us who love having things, you know, like little mementos. It's like a physical uh, memento of a trip or a memory. And I, I'm more of that. And it's really been a struggle in life to try to rein that in and not want to turn everything into a physical um a physical keepsake because, well, that's just not practical in the life that I live. And um, so I wanted to pay homage, homage, homage <laughs> to that, to that little phrase. And as I was gluing these very difficult, problematic little wooden letters, I actually was, I was reminded because I had time to think as I was crafting and I, I was very quiet within my own head. And I was just re reminded of this story. Um, my parents have uh, this very, uh, a, a very long friendship with another couple. And this couple has gotten to travel around the world so many times. Um, most of us would be immensely jealous <laughs> of, of all of the trips they've taken throughout their marriage. And they had amassed a really nice collection of mementos, all these different places and, and things that they've experienced. And maybe about five years ago, they had a fire and their entire house burnt to the ground, including all of those physical mementos. And that was what I was reminded of as I was gluing my letters is just in an instant, it was all gone. And then of course, my mind went to the scripture in the Bible about how we're not to store up treasures here on earth where moth or rust can destroy them, but to store up our treasures in heaven. So I think that whole thing just came full circle as I was um, gluing this down. This this photo itself is just this really, um, I just thought it was really eerily beautiful. And it's obviously very, yeah, very, I would say that it probably would feel eerie to be in this subway station that's very pink. I don't know if it actually is in real life or if the photo was altered, um, but I had digitally put my honey in it and she looks very, uh, she looks like she's con like contemplative. <laughs> so maybe she just went on an epic shopping spree on her vacation. And so now she's having these thoughts like I really should be collecting memories and not buying all this stuff so that my husband is rolling his eyes at me when uh, I get home from my trip and he sees all my stuff. I don't know, something like that. So uh, that I wanted to make use of this space, but then it was it was a little harder than I thought. So I think all these lines and it just I don't know. Maybe it's busy, but I kind of I do kind of like it. Um, this photo is another one that I had from my Pinterest board, uh, and it has all this lovely 
white space, which I felt was like the perfect canvas to doing one of my favorite little crafting treatments, which is to kind of like piece paper together, almost like you're quilting um, with my very, like my much smaller punches I have. I have punches on kind of two different scales. One, one set's like a one inch type, and this is like a, the baby. I spent some time yesterday punching out little bitty diamonds and and when I had them in my hand, I thought, oh, they this would be really great to try doing that. So I love the idea of this um, decor alongside the building. It also enhances their outfits, like what they're wearing, the turquoise blue of the background and her little top. So very much, very cohesive. I loved that. Um, this one didn't turn out as wonderful as I'd hoped. At the last second after, I knew I wanted to just put little whimsical stars. And I wanted to point out something about this. A particular card um, and this is just a principle I would say sometimes it's really not the the, the subjects uh, in your photograph or your your layout it can be something outside of that and for me in this picture it was the color the color palette was what had caught my eye um, when I saw the photo and I loved I knew that these gorgeous champagne stars were just going to be really magical um, with this color palette. Now, what I attempted to do, <laughs> and, wish, and I wish I could have a do-over, is I, at the last second, I remembered the phrase, the world is your oyster. And I kind of felt like, oh, that really, that's really a great message because she's going into the oyster bar, you know. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> my lettering skills are, I should have set that up a little differently. Perhaps even gave it a practice but I used a white jelly roll pen the white Sakura jelly roll which I think I think every crafter should have a white jelly roll pen in her arsenal because they are fantastic for adding little details to darker paper darker photos and just adding something which this was an attempt at being whimsical and um, not a complete failure I, I can certainly read what I wrote there um, and then these two over here um, are the the original pool honeys I decided to give these girls names this is Joyce and this is Bev <laughs> the pool honeys uh, which if you've been in the reset girl community for a long time you will get that reference and that is what we I started calling these ladies in the first place was the honeys and that's where it comes from which that phrase comes from a movie called the sandlot so um in this case, we have this honey who's at a flea market and she is flea market fabulous. So I don't know if the theme is kind of, um, I don't really feel like it's obvious. In my mind, this was a collection of honeys. Maybe it's obvious, I'm not sure, but I, these girls just make my heart pitter pat. I've never gotten tired of them. Um, I just love them. I've always loved them ever since I was a little girl. And I remember flipping through the uh, fabric store, um, the pattern books, and they reminded me of my mom. My mom was very, she was very fabulous when I was a kid. And um, so I just have like all of these wonderful sentimental feelings. So I kind of, I've loved for the last few years, I've really loved um, playing with them in a digital format, kind of clipping them, cropping them, and inserting them into these lovely little vignettes. Uh, photo credits will be in the description box if I have them to share, as um, I did use some existing photos that were kind of randomly pinned on the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these into the pockets. Um, I did, ex I did, did, yeah, I did do the little. Um, the little word strips in two different ways. I was kind of experimenting with what was the best way to do that. And I guess this ended up being the best way, gluing them down and then attaching them. So that was the best, best method, easiest method. Um, let me get this one in here. So this week is all about the girls and they're kind of like, I would almost dare to say that they're kind of like on vacation they're all doing fabulous things. I cannot get enough of these glitter stars. I am so in love. I like punched a bunch of new ones. So you will not, you will not see the last of these. That's for sure. They're probably going to end up being a really common design element in my album. These wooden letters and stars have been, um, they're like a craft supply. I've had 
for a while, but I don't use them much. So this was kind of neat getting an opportunity to use them. My picture is slightly uh, taller than the pocket which I didn't really try to make everything like uh, exact, you know, exact. I, I wanted to have wiggle room in the design process. So I may or may not trim that down. So this would be this week's prompt, which is collection. So I don't know if you enjoyed that process. I really actually did <laughs> because uh, I actually had to get quite a few things as I was crafting. And um, I was just, I was having so many problems like, getting things the glue was really my nemesis today i have to say both both types i was dropping things i couldn't the the tweezers were they were working against me not with me so i actually did have a fair amount of little crafty frustrations doing my page today and i think not talking and just kind of like handling it <laughs> it just Dealing with it internally, I, that actually was um, much more pleasurable and it kind of took, it just made this like pleasurable, you know, like just, I'm just crafting, that's all I'm doing. And then I'm sharing it with my friends. So I hope you are enjoying the crafting process if you are doing it. And I would love to know, that could be another answer besides telling me what type of videos you like. Um, let me also know, are you actually doing the pocket art challenge? Because um, I would love to know that. And if so, how are you finding it so far? I am actually, I'm really, I am loving this process. Um, and I certainly hope to continue loving this process because I have a lot of weeks ahead of me to go. So let me know in the comments. I appreciate you watching as always. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.